my eighth morning, I gazed at the birds soaring above my camp in Tucson Mountain Park and wondered if they were perhaps the same birds that greeted me the morning before, further back along the historic Butterfield Overland Stagecoach route. As they moved on, I knew it was time for me to follow suit. Saguaro National Park surrounds the major metropolitan area of Tucson and is actually divided into two halves, the east and west portions of the park. I headed into Tucson to see if there were any remnants of the old Tucson station. All I was able to find was the Dairy Queen. I'm sure a blizzard would have been outstanding on the trail. Next stop was to head to the famous Desert Rat Off-Road Center to get some new treads that I had lost on my fifth day on the trail. Check out that video if you haven't seen it. From there, I stopped in a local outdoor store, Summit Hut, to get some other goods. It was midday, and it was awful hot, so I stopped for a photo before heading into Saguaro National Park East. With this being a slight detour from the Butterfield, I left the bike mounted and did a quick car tour of the park, enjoying the flora and the views. After the short scenic loop, I was headed to search for the Cienega Creek Station. The Cienega Station is a storied station in the local area and was at the literal crossroads of mankind, dating back to the Paleo-Indian era. I found Edward Vale's writings on the area to be quite fitting, and I've shared them with you here. From the Hohokam, the Cochise, and Apache tribes, pioneers, Butterfield stagemen, and railroad workers, the area certainly had seen its share of travel. I had a couple of leads from my research on the whereabouts of this station, so I set forth to see what I could discover. As I was traveling eastbound, my first clues led me to a small turnoff from the highway and an abandoned cow pen near the railroad. The rail was a good sign, as many tracks mirrored or even covered the original rabbit bucket. I decided to do an investigative hike and was greeted with a passing freight train. In multiple writings through my research, the location of this station varies, and it very likely could have been moved throughout the operation alone. The first spot led me to this opening, east of the railway. However, I read there was another location further along Sienega Creek, so I continued onward to explore. This led me to this turnoff to Sienega Creek Preserve at the Three Bridges Landmark. A short ways from the parking lot lies what I believe to be the intact ruins of the Sienega Station and the Butterfield Stagecoach Line. To my delight, upon examining the site, there are clearly ruins of the foundation and walls of the old station, and a plethora of old metal scraps and artifacts in the vicinity. This was a particularly exciting find for me, as it had been some time since I discovered the actual remains of one of the stations themselves. The reports of this station say it was once 60 by 114 feet, with living quarters, stock corrals, and more. In 1862, the station had burned down. It was also used by the U.S. Army here during the Civil War. I believe many of the metal scraps and other debris were remnants of the rail construction as this area was a large home to Chinese laborers during the 1880s. After surveying the ruins, I headed back to my truck at Three Bridges, and I was off to the next station along the route, the San Pedro River Station. I was looking forward to seeing a river station, although even in Ormsby's 1858 account of the trail, he described the flow as insignificant. I entered the town of Benton and realized that 160 years later, that's still true. The crossing Andy Wash, and due to the development of the town, the station has all but disappeared. 
today, this is all that's left of the San Pedro River. From Benson, I had to take a short detour from the Butterfield route and visit the famous Wild West Mecca of Tombstone, the town that was too tough to die. Home to the gunfight at the OK Corral, and dozens more stories of Western lore and Hollywood reincarnations. Driving into the town of Tombstone, you're instantly transported back to the 19th century. The town has done a superb job of retaining its lineage and history, and I was already glad that I decided to visit. Seeing the Butterfield stage lines was a nice little plus. I also had to inspect the local brewery and resupply my coolers. Tombstone has an outstanding brewery, and I highly recommend they're cleverly named Another Exercise in Mediocrity. While these days you're equally likely to see a pickup than a gunslinger, they still walk the streets. Sunset over Tombstone, I dropped into the Crystal Palace Saloon, made some friends, and then set off into the night. What's up, buddy? Where I made some more friends. Hey. I've been on a lot of back roads, but I've never encountered a pack of horses out roaming around, let alone ones friendly enough to come over and say hello. I drove alongside my friends for a short while before they finally parted ways and headed off into the night. From there, it was a short drive up into the Coronado National Forest and the Dragoon Mountains towards the Cochai Stronghold, where I'd be staying for the night. Tomorrow, I'd be setting back out on the trail and exploring the Dragoon Springs Station. See y'all soon. Thanks again for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Really appreciate it.